Alright, we're back and we're looking at some electromagnetic induction and in particular we're, we're just going to focus in this one on what happens uh, with Faraday's law when you have induced voltages and induced currents due to changing magnetic fields. Okay? So this is going to be the case where the induced voltage has a constant area but a changing magnetic field. Okay, this is one of the ways that you can change flux, and that's really a, that's what Faraday's law says, is if you change magnetic flux, you're going to induce voltage and currents. What happens, though, is while we, we know this happens, and we've seen this in the lab, uh, the question becomes, like, physically, why? Why and how can a current turn on like that? In this case, um, we're going to focus on this reason of you, you basically have a circulating electric field. Okay, This is kind of weird, because electric fields up to now, with Gauss's law and things like that, are, are radial fields. They're, they start at a charge and they shoot outwards and spread out over distance. Um, whereas magnetism up to now, if you have a, a current flowing, um, a circulating magnetic field turns on. We've, we've seen that with compass needles and, and whatnot. But here, um, we're going to talk about a circulating electric field. So th this kind of fits in with this whole idea of, of using one word, electromagnetism, where if, if something happens one way, it probably is going to happen the other way. <laughs> so for example, if, if electricity makes magnetism, then magnetism makes electricity. And that's Faraday's law. Now when you talk about the production of these fields, um, we know that when, when you have a moving charge, that causes a, a circulating magnetic field to turn on. And we already know how to handle that mathematically. That, that's Ampere's law. We have that path integral of magnetic field times the length of the path that it follows. And that's proportional to a constant in the current, which is the source of the magnetic field. One way of thinking about a moving charge, you know, if, if you're sitting at a point in space and a, a charge is moving anywhere near you, the electric field is going to be changing because you're changing the position of that charge relative to you. So you could sort of say that if you have a moving charge and a changing electric field, that induces a circulating magnetic field. Well, let's reverse the roles. What if you have instead of a changing electric field, what if you have a changing magnetic field? Okay. Um, if a changing electric field induces a circulating magnetic field, a changing magnetic field, well, why not? It could produce a, or induce and turn on a circulating electric field, and that's exactly what happens. So the moral of the story is, when you change the magnetic field, an electric field turns on and circulates around those magnetic field lines. So let's do an example. Let, let's see how what this looks like in practice. So um, here we have a, a wire hoop. That's that dark line, that solid line. And let's say that uh, you're, you're going to change just a, a small region of magnetic field inside that wire hoop. Okay, so that radius A is smaller than, than radius B. So literally, there, there's, there's no magnetic field at the position of the wire. So what that means is that um, there's no way that you can have something like QV cross B happening to the, those free electrons in that conducting wire. Okay? That, that can't explain it because there is no magnetic field there. There's no magnetic force that's going to happen on that wire. So Faraday's law, on the other hand, says that if we change the flux, not just the field, but the flux, that's the key quantity, that's going to turn on and induce a voltage and therefore a current. So here's our case where we, the area of the hoop and the, the area where that magnetic flux is, is, is fixed. And we're going to say that something's happening where we have a changing magnetic field. Maybe it looks 
let's just make something up. Maybe we say that magnetic field in there is it doesn't really matter, 6t cubed. Okay. So um we can use something like Lenz's law and say, okay, well, you have an increasing magnetic field into the screen. Um, the fact that there's flux inside of that conducting hoop and that flux is changing tells us that there should be a current that turns on. Now we can figure out which way the current's going to go from Lenz's law. So an increasing flux into the screen means that you, using the curly right hand rule, you want to have the induced current turn on going counterclockwise, which will produce flux out of the screen, and try to stop the flux from increasing. Now, one of the questions is, what area should we use? Well, the area where you have flux is that little dashed circle, chi A squared. That's, that's where the magnetic field is. That's the region where you have flux. And if, if we use 6t cubed as our magnetic field function, the derivative of that would simply be 18t squared. So there's our voltage. Okay. But now, that doesn't explain physically why the current turns on, though. <laughs> um, there's no magnetic force there. How can that be? Well, if we say that an electric field turns on and circulates around that magnetic field, um, basically that arrow that I drew for the current is, the reason the current goes that way, is because the electric field circulates counterclockwise. So we, we have we have these close circles of electric fields going all around there at all all distances. Okay? Mathematically, how do you handle a circulating field? Well, we already know. It's Ampere's law. But instead of magnetic field, I'm gonna stick in an E times the length of the path. Now, if you look at this, <laughs> it's kind of weird. This electric field times length, well, we've seen that before. Um, back in electrostatics, the, the negative integral of electric field times a distance, well, we have a name for that. That's voltage, electric potential or EMF. Okay, we have three names for the same thing. So the, the negative um, path integral of this electric field has units of volts. Well, that's the induced voltage that the wire hoop sees. Faraday's law gives us a second way of knowing what that voltage is. We just found that with Faraday's law. So what we can do is say, okay, well, we can uh, determine now the electric field that's circulating. Okay, Th this path integral, because it's a circular path, is simply um, electric field times circumference. Well, if we want to figure out the field that the wire sees, that radius is, is radius b on our picture, so 2 pi b is, is the length of the path going through the wire. And that's equal to pi squared h t t squared. So we can solve for electric field at the wire. Uh, the pi drops out. A uh, factor of two drops out. And what else? We're dividing by b. Okay. So we can determine the electric field in the wire. That's how the current turns on. The electric field goes through that wire, it pushes those three electrons and produces a current. Um, it may sound weird, but physically this is what really happens. That's the reason you don't need a magnetic field at the position of the wire. All you need is a changing flux. Okay? And again, the key is a changing magnetic field. When you have that, we can have an induced electric field. That's where it comes from. That's what causes um, that, that current to start flowing. 
I hope this makes a little bit of sense. Um, we're talking about circulating fields. We have Ampere's law for electric fields that has units of volts. So we can set that equal to Faraday's law and actually solve for the electric field that it turns on. So until next time, we'll see you later.